Saucier, this is a video lesson on describing functions. And this is going to be a first go at it at this level of math. There's a lot of things that can be said about functions. The more math we learn, the more ways we have learned to describe the behavior or the attributes of functions. I have a function here. It's a curve. We could say this is a function f. There's a surprising number of things that we can justify simply from this graph. And since we'll be working from a graph, the things that we are going to say about this function are informal. In order to formally justify the attributes that this function has, we would need its expression and prove things algebraically. But what can we say from having this? What do we know? quite a number of things. One is we could say that this is a polynomial. It's not a sinusoidal function. It does look like a sine curve, but because the arrows are suggesting that it keeps going in that direction and it keeps going down over here, it doesn't cycle. So the algebra has to come from, or the expression for this has to come from a polynomial form. We know that its degree, or the highest exponential value, is 3. How do we know? From that technique of imagining a line intersecting our function. If we place a line here, the maximum number of times that a line could intersect the function is shown to be 3. We could put a line here and get two intersections. Well, there will be a third here. Um, if the function was shown to go up. But the maximum number of intersections that we can find with a line is 3. Its degree is 3. That means that of all the terms of the polynomial that this function could have, the highest exponent will be 3, which means that we could think of this as a transformed cubic. Cubic literally meaning power of 3. We can observe that there are three x-intercepts. We could write the expression in factored form by identifying these locations. And in general, we're going to call the locations, the x-values of these intercepts, a, b, and c, which allows us to put the function in a factored form, x minus a, times x minus b times x minus c, if this is equal to 0. What else do we know? Well, we could see that the curve reaches a peak or a maximum here, and this place in the domain in which there is a maximum value, we could label, we'll call it x sub 1. And here the curve reaches a low point, or a minimum, and the place in the domain which it reaches that minimum we could label x sub 2, and we could then say that there is a maximum at x sub 1, and a minimum at x sub 2. And obviously, we're not giving values to these locations. I'm not uh, counting boxes to say that the value of a is 2. We're generalizing these locations and listing the attributes in general terms. What else could we say about this? The arrows suggest that the function keeps going. So we can describe the end behavior of this function. And we can do it in the form of limits. We'd say the limit as x approaches infinity, looking to the graph on the right and imagine it keep on going, we could say the limit as x approaches infinity is equal to infinity, because the arrowhead suggests the values go up forever. The other end, the limit as x approaches negative infinity, imagining that we could see the graph as it continues down, is negative infinity. We could also say that the function is going up here. The values are increasing. And then the values of the function are going down or decreasing. And once we reach this point, 
the function values increase again. Those two terms, increasing and decreasing, are descriptions of function behavior. And we often say or show where a function is increasing and decreasing in interval notation. So with this function and these labels, we could say that the function is increasing on the interval from negative infinity all the way up to x sub 1. So this is interval notation. It's not a point, but the reason why I use rounded parentheses in this interval is because we can't ever be at negative infinity, so we don't include negative infinity as a value that it is increasing at. Likewise, x sub 1 is a maximum. It's neither increasing or decrease, decreasing right at that point. It's increasing before we get there, but we don't include that point as an endpoint for this interval. So this is not a point, this is interval notation, and there is a second interval in which the function is increasing from this location here at x sub 2, and then afterwards the function is going up. So we could say the interval notation that begins at x sub 2 and continues to infinity, and of course this isn't a point we're using rounded parentheses for this interval to suggest that it's increasing between, but not precisely at, those endpoints. And what does it mean to be increasing? There is a fairly complicated formal algebraic way of establishing and proving that it's increasing, but we're going to go for an informal understanding of what it means to increase, and that's why I'm going to put it in quotes. We can think that a function is increasing by thinking as x, or the horizontal variable, increases or gets larger, the values of the function in general, then f of x, is increasing. As x increases, the function values also increase. What about decreasing? We could say that this function is decreasing on an interval. It's the interval where the function values are going down, and that starts at x sub 1 and continues going down until we get to x sub 2. And we don't include those endpoints because it's not increasing or decreasing right at those points. So we say decreasing on the interval that starts at x sub 1 but doesn't include it and goes until x sub 2 but doesn't include it. And what do we mean by decreasing? Informally, we can think as x increases, the values of the function f of x decrease. Again, we put it in quotes because this is an informal understanding, but it's sufficient to understand what's going on but we wouldn't use this understanding to prove it if we were expected to. Something else that can be said about this function is its concavity, concave down and concave up. Concave down on an interval from negative infinity up until this point B. And what does it mean to be concave down? It has this shape. It's an open down, much like a parabola that has been reflected to open down. Informally, we can think of concave down as a shape of curvature that's like an umbrella. And of course, this is informal. So I'll put it in quotes. I hope I spelled umbrella correctly. Probably not knowing me. In this part of the function, it's concave down. It's like an umbrella that would shed rain. And at this point here, the concavity changes because it becomes concave up 
informally we could think of it like a bowl and it is concave up on an interval. The concavity changes at B. It goes from being concave down to concave up. So we could say it's concave up on the interval that starts at B and then is concave up ever afterwards, so it goes to infinity. And informally, we can think of a function being described as concave up as looking like a bowl. We begin with an understanding of concavity and these very informal ways because the formal justification for concavity is going to require some higher mathematics and calculus in order to prove and justify algebraically. We're not ready for that. But these are decent descriptions and the place at which the concavity changes, which is neither concave up or concave down at B, but B is a special location and feature of the function, we call it an inflection point. So there is an inflection at B because there is a change in concavity at B. Some of these descriptions we're going to use calculus in order to discover, prove, and justify.